Hey, students and educators. My name is Lenora Tadaro, and I am the author of Sea Lions in the Parking Lot, Animals on the Move in a Time of Pandemic. I'm really excited to be here reading to you from my bedroom, which is where my desk is, which is where I write, and which is where I wrote this book. Also, it's purple, and I like purple. I want to introduce you first to my assistant, Halftime. Halftime is a sea lion, and she is named for a real sea lion that was orphaned in California after being spotted watching the Super Bowl through a glass window of a bar on the beach. Halftime was rescued and ultimately ended up at the Prospect Park Zoo in Brooklyn, which is where I volunteer and where I met Halftime. And I tell you this because I love sea lions, but also because the stories that I'm going to be reading to you are based on real animals too, just like halftime. What happened was this. During the COVID-19 lockdown, while many people were inside and in their homes and many industries slowed down, an unplanned experiment took place. Scientists and conservationists began to ask, what would happen to wildlife? while human activity was paused. Hmm. Well, animals were on the move, expanding their habitats. Wait, what's a habitat? Let's see if we can figure that out after reading some of these stories. I'm gonna read you a selection of them. And afterwards, I'm gonna show you some photographs of some of the real animals that inspired these stories. I'm gonna share my screen with you so that you can see the illustrations, which are so beautiful. The first story is about a kangaroo. And this kangaroo was spotted um, on a police video. So we have a recording of the actual kangaroo. The parklands of Adelaide, Australia form a figure eight, wrapping the city center with a green belt. Mobs of kangaroos live nearby in the hills among the shrubbery and woods. Usually, they don't go into the city. It's crowded with people and cars, scary for a room. When the people of Adelaide stay inside, the city is quiet. One morning, a kangaroo leaves its home and enters the city center. Like a fugitive, it bounces down empty avenues, bounds through stoplights, free to hop here and there and everywhere. In the shadows of towering buildings, a flamboyance of flamingos roost and nest in the wetlands of Navi Mumbai in India. Wetlands are like sponges hoping to control floods. Wetlands are home to so many creatures and plants and trees. Flamingos migrate here every year, undisturbed by people, fishing boats and construction. Flamingos forage for algae and other tiny organisms. So much good food is easy to get now. More flamingos than usual flock to the area, nearly 150,000. As they lift into the sky, they paint the water pink. A pride of lions lounge on a barren road in the South African savanna. Grasslands where lone trees have popped up here and there. Ordinarily, the roads are clogged with safari trucks filled with tourists wielding cameras and phones. All that human activity nudges the lions deeper into the bush, especially in the daytime. Oh, what a relief it is for the lions to be able to laze on a warm road, to yawn and snooze with their bellies full in the hot midday sun, without bother from growling vehicles and chatty onlookers. Sounders of wild boars haunt the abandoned streets of Haifa, Israel, and other cosmopolitan centers that border the shrinking forests where boars make their grassy nests. 
They do this from time to time, usually at night. But with people inside, boars roam during the daytime too. They snuffle as they overturn garbage cans and root through gardens. Sometimes they block roads, casting huge shadows. The boars don't mean to be destructive. They're just hungry and they smell an opportunity to eat without people telling them to shoot. A colony of sea lions emerge from the coastal waters of Mar del Plata, Argentina, and flop on the sand of a seaside resort. They do this day after day, resting on caves, snoring, enjoying a respite from the fishing trawlers. With so few people out, the sea lions push further into town. They saunter about, eyeing shuttered souvenir stores. The shelter from the wind comforts these 800 pound water mammals who sunbathe in parking lots like rocks in the sea. Spring peepers look like tree bark and sing like sleigh bells. Every spring in Maine and east of the Mississippi River, these small frogs slip out from their frozen winter sleep an army of amphibians trilling songs for mates as they make ready for their seasonal migration. Their journey over logs, leaves, and roads to ponds where females lay their eggs. With so few cars, more of these paperclip-sized frogs than usual cross the road without mishap. Urban coyotes live along the edges of American cities in forests or woody patches of land. Unlike their prairie and desert kin, they like to hunt at night when there are fewer humans out and about than in the daytime. Because the people are inside though, day is as serene as night and packs of coyotes can stroll along avenues in broad daylight. In San Francisco, a coyote trots along the beach with a view of the Golden Gate Bridge. In New York City, Coyote pups born in a Bronx graveyard peek out from beneath a mausoleum, a welcome sign of life. That's a selection from the book. And now I wanna show you some photos and even a video of the real animals that inspired these stories. Let's watch about 10 seconds of this video of the kangaroo that was hopping through the streets in Australia. I love that video. Here's a photograph of the flamingos that were nesting in the wetlands near Navi Mumbai in India. There's so many of them, and you can see that they actually do make the water look pink. Here's a photograph of the lions in South Africa in Kruger National Park that were lounging in the road, undisturbed by trucks and tourists. Here are the boars that were spotted in Haifa, Israel. But boars have also been spotted in most European cities, in Rome and Berlin and Paris. Here's um, a couple of families of boars and the photo on the bottom, you can see they're walking right through a courtyard or maybe a parking lot that belongs to a residential building. Here are the sea lions in Argentina and you can see them laying about in the parking lot. And then here's this one big guy that took a little stroll into town and is looking up at one of the shuttered stores. Here is a peeper. It is a tiny, tiny little frog about the size of a paper clip, but it makes a very big sound. So let's listen to a few seconds of the way a peeper sounds. And here is the coyote that was seen near the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco. Remember when I told you I would tell you some secrets about the book? Well, one of them is about the coyotes. The coyotes that were seen in a Bronx graveyard um, actually live 
right near where I did when I grew up as a kid. So I know this graveyard and I know these coyotes and they're very special to me. Another secret to tell you is that there are group names for animals throughout this book. So for example, you might've heard me say a mob of kangaroos. It's hmm, an interesting word, a mob of kangaroos. So here's my question and my challenge. When you read these stories, see if you can spot the other group names for animals that I write about. And finally, my last secret. Remember when I said at the beginning that we would figure out what a habitat is? Well, I write about different ones in this book, like oceans and wetlands and grasslands. So a habitat is a place where an organism lives, where they can find things they need to survive, food, water, shelter, space. So here's my question. How would you describe your habitat? I live in New York City. So I describe mine as a big crowded city with green parks and patches of woodlands, even some wetlands, surrounded on one side by a river and on the other by an ocean. Here's a few more questions to ask. What did you like about these stories? If you could meet any of the animals in this book, which one would it be and why? Do you think there's a message in this book? There is. I hope you enjoy participating in the STEAM Race to Space Reading Challenge. I know I have. My name is Lenora Tadero, and my book is Sea Lions in the Parking Lot, Animals on the Move in a Time of Pandemic. If you want to find out more about the book or about me, or if you want to download a discussion guide, you can do that on my website at www.lenoratadero.com. So thanks for spending time with me and listening to these stories about animals on the move. Bye for now. Say goodbye, halftime. Bye for now. <laughs>